The Earth's state is worsening, and the obvious cause is the drying up of rivers. We're talking about the American rivers, which are rapidly disappearing. So based on the data, will this situation be resolved soon, or will we be in some kind of danger? Join us as we dig further into this topic on the unknown facts. Up a river without a paddle is a phrase that means you can't get out of a tough situation. But if that river is in the northern hemisphere, the paddle is probably not going to help anyway. Rivers in the US, Europe, Asia and the Middle East are drying up because of a painful lack of rain and constant heat waves. Many are getting shorter and thinner. There are often parts of the riverbed that stick up above the water. Some rivers have dried up so much that they are almost impossible to cross. Extreme weather is happening all over the world because of the climate crisis, which is caused by people. This affects not only rivers, but also the people who depend on them. At the beginning of 2022, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration made a forecast that a mega drought that has been affecting the western region for the past 22 years would not only worsen but also spread eastward. According to the data provided by the U.S. Drought Monitor, approximately 82% of the continental U.S. is currently experiencing circumstances that fall somewhere on the spectrum between unusually dry and extreme drought. This prediction appears to be coming true. And while the U.S. and the rest of North America continue to witness water levels dropping in important rivers, lakes, and reservoirs, experts told ABC News that similar events are occurring all over the world as a result of a combination of climate change and poor water management policies. Rivers all over the world are running incredibly low, particularly the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in Iraq, as well as significant bodies of water in nations such as Italy, Romania, France, and China, according to the statement. The Environmental and Energy Management Program at George Washington University is taught by Jonathan Deason, who is also a professor there. As bodies of water continue to dry up, the experts believe that it will be essential to implement a two-pronged strategy that addresses both the mitigation of climate change and the improvement of water management policies. However, because so much harm has already been done, even significant improvements or reductions in emissions will not instantly alter the amount of stress that is placed on water levels, according to what they indicated. Now let's take a look at the American rivers that are drying up. First is the Colorado River. As a result of a historic drought in the U.S. West, the Colorado River is drying up at its banks and getting thinner. Two of the country's biggest reservoirs are very important to the river. To protect the river basin, the government has ordered mandatory water cuts and asked the states to come up with more plans. One of these reservoirs, Lake Mead, is getting smaller as the water level drops toward Deadpool status. This is when the water level isn't high enough to let water flow through a dam and into the river below. Since 2000, the water level has been going down, but since 2020, it has gone down more quickly. In the past year, the lake has shrunk so much that strange things have been found like human bones in a barrel that is thought to be someone who was killed decades ago. And the effects of the crisis on the Colorado River are huge. About 40 million people in seven U.S. states and Mexico use water from the river to drink, farm, and make electricity. Next is the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River is one of the longest rivers in the world, and it is responsible for draining a significant portion of the U.S. The Mississippi is also one of the most powerful rivers in the world but as of late, it seems as though the river is losing its flow. There are a few possible explanations for why this is taking place. There is a chance that the river's population has begun to dwindle as a result of environmental factors, combined with greenhouse gas emissions and the destruction of habitat. The Mississippi River Basin has been experiencing precipitation levels that are below average for the past few years, which has led to a decrease in the amount of water that is flowing into the river. One further possibility is that there have been unusually large numbers of people taking things out of the river. This may be the result of factors such as increased irrigation for agricultural purposes or an increase in the amount of water utilized in fracking operations. Whatever the reason may be, it is abundantly evident that something is leading to the drying up of the Mississippi River. Many people and businesses rely on the river for a variety of reasons, including transportation, recreation, and even just as a supply of drinking water. This presents a challenge for those individuals and businesses. There is a chance that the river will one day return to its normal level, but there is also a chance that this level will become the new normal. In either case, it is critical to maintain a close check on the situation and to be ready for anything that may occur in the future. The third is the Snake River. 
the Snake River is considered to be one of the great rivers in the U.S. It begins in the mountains of Idaho and continues all the way across the state of Washington until it reaches the Columbia River. It is a major thoroughfare in the Pacific Northwest. It has been an essential component of daily life in the area for many decades, serving as both a significant transit corridor and a source of water for agricultural irrigation. However, the Snake River is currently experiencing some difficulties. The river is evaporating as a consequence of a number of reasons, including pollution and allotment of its water supply. Algae blooms, which can occur in certain sections of the river, are responsible for the death of fish and the issuance of advisories, cautioning people and their animals from entering the water. This is a significant challenge for humans as well as the species who are reliant on the river, and things are only going to get worse with the passage of time. So what steps may be taken to prevent further damage to the Snake River? This is a subject that researchers from several fields, including environmentalists and scientists, as well as policymakers, are attempting to address. But it is abundantly evident that we need to take prompt and decisive action if we want to maintain the flow of this essential river. The fourth one is the Mobile River. One of the most well-known rivers in the U.S. is the Mobile River, which is located in Alabama. Additionally, it is one of the most significant rivers in the nation because it serves as a source of water for millions of people and helps to sustain a flourishing economy. However, the Mobile River is in a state of disrepair. It is becoming drier. The issue has been becoming steadily worse over the past few years, but it has only recently come to a head in the past few months. Drought, human activity, and poor management are the three primary contributors to this problem, despite the fact that its root causes are multifaceted. Since it began, drought has been one of the most significant issues affecting the southeast, and it has taken its toll on the Mobile River. The flow of the river is dependent on rainfall, and unfortunately, as a result of climate change, there hasn't been nearly enough rain in recent years. Meanwhile, the activities of humans are making the problem even more severe. The flow of water through the river has been altered as a result of the construction of dams and levees, and the amount of pollution in the river has increased as a result of the discharge of wastewater from companies and sewage treatment plants. If improper management prevents the Mobile River from being appropriately protected, this will result in the destruction of the natural ecosystem as well as the loss of billions of dollars. The fall of the river is having an impact that can be seen and felt across the entire region. Those businesses that are dependent on the river are having a difficult time. Fish numbers are decreasing and the quality of the drinking water is at stake. The Mobile River is an essential component of the southeast, and the current state of its ecosystem presents a significant challenge. However, there is still a chance that the river will recover. It's possible that the Mobile River can be brought back to its former splendor if it receives the management and conservation efforts it needs. The next river is the Platte River. Stunning images that came out of Nebraska shed light on the harsh reality of the consequences that are occurring as a result of decreasing amounts of snowpack. As a result of the decreasing amount of snow that falls during the winter, the Platte River in central Nebraska, which is fed by snowmelt from the Rocky Mountains in Wyoming and Colorado and feeds into Lake McConaughey, has not had the chance to replenish its water supply. Photos taken along a stretch of Interstate 90 close to Kearney, Nebraska, show a riverbed that has been completely drained of water and is now located beneath a bridge where the river used to be completely submerged. The Drought Center tweeted last year that precipitation outlooks for the fall are forecast to be dry, and more than a third of the Platte River is currently experiencing extreme conditions or worse. KLKN, the ABC affiliate in Lincoln, Nebraska, reported that irrigation has caused most of the reservoirs in the northeast and southwest regions of Nebraska, which are both experiencing extreme drought, to become depleted. According to a climatologist with the National Drought Mitigation Center who spoke with KLKN, Widespread areas throughout the state have been quite dry and quite warm since the beginning of July, which has caused the water demand and usage for crops to dramatically increase. Even though it is not unusual for the river to be dry during the irrigation season, specialists are monitoring the river downstream of Columbus as an indicator of the overall health of the river, according to Jason Farnsworth, executive director of the Platte River Recovery Implementation Program, who was interviewed by KLKN. Another water body that is drying is the Great Salt Lake. The Great Salt Lake, which is both the largest saltwater lake in the world and the largest terminal lake in the Western Hemisphere, 
has been steadily shrinking at alarmingly rapid rates in recent decades. A study that was published in Nature Geoscience found that the lake had lost half of its water by 2017 since the first settler had arrived in the area in 1847. According to the researchers who spoke with PBS, it has now reached levels that are unsustainable and is operating at one-third of its original capacity. According to scientists who spoke with ABC News in July, the loss of water in the lake, which is currently at its lowest levels ever, is already producing a severe ecological ripple effect through the state of Utah, and it is probable that the problem will get worse. Because of the drying up, more than 800 square kilometers of the river have been made visible to the public. Researchers say that development in the region, which has led to large population increases, is responsible for the majority of the decline. However, climate change and drought are also to blame for the decline. Kyle Stone, a wildlife biologist for the state of Utah, told ABC News that animals and plants near the lake are already bearing the burden of the lake's reduction in water levels. According to Stone, the salinity of the water is increasing as the water levels drop, which is killing algae, which is the source for brine shrimp, which serves as food for more than 10 million birds that stop at the lake when they are migrating patterns. In addition, according to the research done by scientists, if the lake were to dry up, there would be a significant risk of dust storms occurring as a result of many years' worth of heavy metals and toxic substances that have been trapped in the sediment. Pablo Ortiz, a climate and water scientist at the Union of Concerned Scientists, told ABC News that reservoirs in California are also drying up. California is located further west. According to the California Department of Water Resources, Lake Oroville and Lake Shasta, the two largest reservoirs in the state, have capacities that are only slightly higher than 30 percent, and every other major reservoir in the state, with the exception of one, has levels that are lower than the average for that time period. According to Ortiz, more than 60 percent of the monitored groundwater wells in the state of California are experiencing conditions that are below normal, and more than 21 percent of those wells are currently experiencing levels that are historically low. Workers who are drilling into groundwater wells have told Ortiz that groundwater levels in some regions have dropped by up to 10 feet, Ortiz said. Workers are drilling into groundwater wells right now. Even if we are powerless to stop the drying up of these rivers, we may work to bring attention to the problem and come up with some solutions. So that was all about the video. Hope you find it informative. Then do subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and press the bell icon for more updates like this. Thank you so much for watching our video today, and we hope you enjoyed it. We will see you in our next video. Take care and have a great day.